harbor songs were lyrics composed in ancient Egypt to be sung at funeral feasts. These songs or poems were inscribed in the tomb along with the image of a blind man playing a harp and sending his composition to the deceased and sometimes the family of the departed. Harbour's songs appear in a rudimentary form in the Old Kingdom, circa 2500 BCE. They are brief salutations to the deceased, who is embarking on the next phase of existence, and the praise for the certainty of the afterlife. But they were more fully developed during the Middle Kingdom, circa 2000 BCE when they underwent a significant change. The best known harbor song from the Middle Kingdom is the one which originally appeared in the tomb chapel of a king named Antif. It introduces a more novel, skeptical strand of thought, unknown to ancient religious culture and beliefs in the Old Kingdom. The traditional view of death held that it was not the end of life, but only a transition to the next phase of the soul's eternal journey. The soul of the deceased would awaken its tomb, be led to the hall of truth by the god Anubis, and be judged by Osiris in the presence of Maat, Thoth, and the forty-two judges. If the soul was found worthy, it was justified and continued on to the field of reeds, Seket Aro, the ancient Egyptian paradise. Harbor's song, as inscribed in the tomb of King Antif, throws doubt on the reality of the traditional view of the afterlife and underestimates gods. The harbor, or rather the sage, is shown as lamenting death and advising that life should be fully enjoyed and focusing on present pleasures because what comes afterwards is unknown and questionable. Fortunate is this prince, for happy was his fate, and happy his ending. One generation passes away, and the next remains, ever since the time of those of old. The gods who existed before me rest now in their tombs, and the blessed nobles also are buried in their tombs. But as for these builders of tombs, their places are no more. What has become of them? I have heard the words of Imhotep and Hadidif, whose maxims are repeated intact as proverbs. But what of their places? Their walls are ruins, and their places are no more as if they had never existed. There is no one who returns from beyond, that he may tell of their estate, that he may tell of their lot, that he may set our hearts at ease until we make our journey to the place where they have gone. So rejoice your heart, absence of care is good for you. Follow your heart as long as you live. Put myrrh on your head, dress yourself in fine linen, anoint yourself with the exquisite oils, which are only for the gods. 
Let your pleasures increase and let not your heart grow weary. Follow your heart and your happiness. Conduct your affairs on earth as your heart dictates. For the day of mourning will surely come for you. The weary hearted does not hear their lamentations, and their weeping does not rescue a man's heart from the grave. Enjoy pleasant times and do not weary thereof. Behold, it is not given to any man to take his belongings with him. Behold, there is no one departed who will return again. The poem encourages the listeners to seize the day and to reject the more traditional view of eternity. Even satirizing the building of large funerary monuments and emphasizing that positions cannot be taken into the afterlife with the deceased. This skeptic poem dismisses the idea that the gods, particularly Osiris, are concerned with humans after their death, or that one's tomb guarantees continued existence. Further, since no one has come back from the dead to give proof of an afterlife, there is no reason to set one's hopes too high on the goodness and mercy of the gods. And one would do better, the poet says, to follow one's heart and enjoy life as much as possible. <laughs>